All right, we now have a new team name, logo, and jumper for the new Tasmanian team. It has felt like a long time coming. Uh, If you're a Tasmanian fan who's been invested in getting an AFL team, uh, that has been going on since the 1980s. Obviously, we had the announcement about 12 months ago, I think it was, that there would be a new AFL team, and now uh, we're a big step closer. There's a new layer of legitimacy around this. Now that I've got a name, now that I've got some colors. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the announcements, what I think of the branding, etc., and... uh, uh, also, some of the other little factors that seem to be going on in the background of this. I'm sure everyone's already seen it, uh, but I've got some thoughts around it. Some some positive, some negative. So generally speaking, the, the branding, the name, the devils, I think that was absolutely on the cards. I, I think anything else would have been underwhelming. Uh, there was obviously a few conversations held with Warner Brothers, I think it was, around the, the right to use the name. Thankfully, that hasn't been too much of an issue. They're going with the Tassie Devils, as we expected. So straight off the bat, I love the colors. I know they're the derivative. Of, that's already Tasmania sort of colors, but specifically... Myrtle green, rose red, and primrose yellow. This is some of the. This might be the nicest color scheme in the AFL. I really do think it looks great. Obviously, that's kind of based on Tasmania's existing colors, but from what we've seen, um, I think it looks really nice. I did notice as well they're selling ten dollar foundation memberships, which are just open to everyone. I know people who have just bought memberships despite and obviously not living in Tasmania. They've sold over a hundred thousand memberships already. So they're about ten bucks a pop. You get uh, an ID membership card, you get stickers, and you get access to yet to be released merchandise, which is interesting. So not the merchandise itself I presume it just means access to it obviously this is kind of almost like a crowdfunding thing there was a quote if you wish to see the Tasmanian teams succeed in the AFL become part of the Tassie Devils army now that's our plea that's our request so 10 bucks times 100,000 members in two days that's a million bucks great start great start all right so let's discuss the logo and the jumper of course as well okay so let's start with the logo I I love this logo I think the color scheme looks really nice. I'm really not an aficionado on graphics or anything like that, nor do I really, you know, weigh in on on graphic design or anything like that. But, you know, from the layman's eye, I, I think this looks sick. And at first glance, when I looked at the head of the devil as well, God, that sounded weird. God, there's been a few night outs where I feel like I've been looking at the head of the devil. But anyway, um, yeah, looking at it, I was like, why is it looking east? Because uh, the West Coast logo in particular, I know that um, that faces east for an obvious reason. It represents WA against the east. So I was looking at it going, oh, is there some sort of rivalry with New Zealand here? And then I realized it's very obviously meant to be more or less in the shape of the Tasmanian island. Obviously, a front-facing devil would have looked weird because it's kind of misshapen. But I think that looks sick. I actually reckon that could be one of the best logos in the AFL. It looks lovely. So enough ass kissing. Let's talk about the jumper now. Now, look, I know that this jumper has some relevance, uh, obviously, to their representative team. So like the Tasmania under 18s wear this jumper. Um, I'm not sure about state of origin. I think it's more or less the same. Um, I think the biggest differences that I can see, if you just look at like Colby McKercher here, and Ari Shon Maker. Obviously, the island part's gotten bigger, and it looks like the red color is different. I don't know if that's accurate, but the red looks better. They've made it bigger, and obviously, there's no obnoxious player number on the right. I kind of think they might have missed an opportunity here to make a cooler jumper, to be honest. And I, I realize that it's meant to be a, a nod to their history and their identity as Tasmanians. Like, that's part of the branding they really want to nail down. I don't think it's an amazing jumper, though, to be honest. I get the relevance of it. I think the T in the middle, it just looks a little bit, dare I say it, unprofessional, coming from someone who has no graphic design background at all like I just think they could have done better the colors are really nice I mean my first reaction was maybe could they put the devil head which I think is such a cool logo onto the jumper somehow like in a more primary way than just in the top right corner Uh, but green on green wouldn't look right so then you'd have to make it a yellow background and I could see how that would get iffy and a yellow headed devil might look okay I presume they probably trialed that and it didn't look good I'd imagine I don't hate it at all. I, I just kind of thought in my head there was an opportunity to make something a little bit cooler. So full marks on the logo, the color scheme. I mean, I suppose that's an easy win, but either way, I, I think the result is fantastic. They look great. The jumper is okay. Um, it'd be, it would look cool in green shorts. Obviously, we haven't seen an away jumper yet. Uh, that'll be interesting to see if they even go with one. They might just go with the white shorts. You'd imagine they'd need an alternate kit, though. I mean, I know there's no other teams in the league with green, right? But naturally, they're still going to need a clash probably for some teams, But you know, against Carlton, maybe. So maybe there's still more jumpers to play out. But um, overall, it's okay. I don't absolutely love the jumper. I will show you some, some concepts of other people who have made some concept designs for jumper. So there's one guy I want to point out to you, and I've been subscribed to this guy for a few years now, and his name 
name's Matt N. And he's got, um, you know, his, his channels, it's about a variety of things, but like graphic design is clearly this guy's forte. So let's have a look at some of these concept designs that I really like. So there's this one as a home jumper. I quite like it. Again, it's a lot more red uh, than yellow. I do like the green and gold being the primary colors. Uh, that being said, you know, this is quite unique still. And I think probably an upgrade on the one we've got. And then he's come up with a clash jumper here. Um, you know, that's not bad. I mean, if we have to accept that there's going to be white clash jumpers, that being said, my personal opinion would be, I'd love to see this yellow. You can have a yellow clash jumper. West Coast has a yellow clash jumper. They don't have a white jumper at all. Um, so again, probably for me, just make that yellow. But either way, the concept's really nice. And then there's another one that's a little bit more alternative that he's come up with here. And it's red. And then you've got like three scratch marks. Uh, presumably from a Tasmanian devil. And I think this one is nice, really unique, a little bit out there, but I still think probably would have been a little bit cooler than what they ultimately decided with. But that's just my own personal opinion. Then I got a few other concepts here from AFL Zero Hanger, and this one as well I particularly like. Um, I think this one might actually be my favorite. This would have been a really cool design. Uh, could probably go with the green shorts. They've come up with a few others, but this is by far and away my favorite. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty powerful looking jumper, I reckon. Just, again, my opinion, but these probably would have been a little bit better than what they ultimately decided on. But obviously, this is just my opinion. So obviously, let me know in the comments how wrong I am. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit to play out here with uh, Tasmania and the new team coming in. So I, I don't know how realistic it is that a team doesn't come in. But to set the scene, obviously, the AFL's made an agreement, uh, you know, with Tasmania that new team comes in 2028. Uh, based on the premise as well that Tasmania can provide a 23,000 seat roofed stadium on the Hobart, I think it's Macquarie Point waterfront or something like that. So that is a large part of the deal. The fact that a stadium is going to be part of the package, which will come in in 2029 in their first season, they're going to play it. I think it's Blunston and Launceston. But after that deal was signed, you know, there was a bit of political turmoil in Tasmania, it seems. There was a couple of people that left the Liberal Party over signing this deal. And following that, an election has been called that's right around the corner. I think it's actually Saturday, the 23rd of March, 2024, as I'm recording this. What's that, three or four days away? So if Labor gets in, apparently they are going to try and revisit the deal with the AFL. Now, this is a tricky one because the deal is in place. There's a legally binding contract, but I don't know to what extent they have the power to really mix things up and make this difficult for the AFL because the AFL stance is... If there's no stadium, there is no team. And Andrew Dillon has come out and said it's literally not negotiable. And then that's true, it's legally binding. But again, what, to what extent Labor can make this really difficult for the AFL uh, is a little bit beyond me, I'm not too sure. So hopefully that all goes swimmingly. I think it would be amazing as a selfish football fan to see a roofed stadium in Hobart in 2029. I think that'd be cool. Obviously, the argument against that is, you know, government spending. But to keep this back on football talks, you know, I think this will be re a really interesting scenario here that plays out with respect to Tasmania becoming competitive as quickly as possible. And that's that's what the AFL is saying. They want the Tasmanian team to be competitive or successful from day one. That's actually a direct quote, successful from day one. What in their eyes is successful, I'm not too sure. But obviously, they're looking at the Gold Coast and GWS models. And, you know, probably those expansion teams were might have been too focused on long-term growth, heavily compromised drafts. And, you know, I still think that there was a lot of access to mature players to make that team good quickly. It's just that, you know, maybe the, the way they went about it wasn't ideal. So I'm quite interested to see what levers the AFL pull to give Tasmania access to some quality talent. We know that we draft concessions, that's true. Maybe not to the same extent as GWS and Gold Coast, but assuming that the draft is compromised to some extent, obviously that's going to be a consideration for teams going through a rebuild right now. You'd imagine the earliest the drafts get compromised is probably 2027, maybe 2026 at a push if they can pre-list underage talents. But even then, that would be 2027 draft prospects. So maybe we've got a few years of the draft being fine. But you'd imagine, you know, there's going to be heavy salary cap concessions, you know, maybe potentially bigger list sizes. Mature players at these clubs will be targeted hard by Tasmania. And my impression with Tasmania is like, it's actually pretty nice place to live. I don't know if it'd be super tempting for like 18 to 21 year olds to go there. Maybe it's a little bit like Perth, but if you're over the age of 25, it probably is an amazing place to live. Obviously, I'm comparing that to Melbourne, which, you know, if you're 18 to 21 year old football prospect, that seems like an amazing place to live. Sydney's probably also true. I am speaking out of my depth here, obviously. I've been to Tasmania once, like 20 years ago. But just some thoughts. My, my actual point there is I think they're not going to have too much trouble recruiting players like in their prime or just at the back end of it, which will be very interesting. So as a follow-up video, I might actually do a video com coming up with Tasmania's hypothetical first AFL team and uh, coming up with some rules and some logic to it. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But for now, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think of the, the new brand, the colors, the logo. As always, I like hearing from you. And for now, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.